Hey guys, Dr. Bernard Fragmenti with the Human Being to Wellbeing Companies. Welcome to the Human Being to Wellbeing Podcast. Today's guest is Chris Matney. Chris is one of our newer coaches and he is currently getting ready to go through the Certified Biohacking Advisor program that we'll be offering to people starting in January. On January 11th or 12th it is, I guess, that we're starting with that. Um, he came on board just a little bit ago. So we've been starting to work together, work with some clients, work with getting his business rolling. He's got an amazing story that I really wanted to share with folks. And we're doing these uh, vignettes with our new coaching uh, folks that are coming in to work with us to kind of share with the public a little bit about their background. Uh, hopefully you'll garner a little bit of this about what we saw in Chris and why we wanted to bring him on board. He may have something to say why he chose to come on board with us also and why he has a uh, tremendous passion for helping others. But uh, nonetheless, that should come out in the, the course of us speaking today. So Chris, I want to welcome you to uh, the podcast. Uh, is this the first podcast you've ever been on in your entire lifetime? Yeah, it sure well, is. I feel very honored then. Uh, I'm, I'm, I believe that as you continue coaching, you're going to be on many of these because I think you're going to become a rock star. Uh, part, part, of, part of why I know that uh, is this, is we know in this industry, uh, we can't really teach the story of someone's life, you know, that they have. And you've got a tremendous story uh, as far as what you've done. Uh, for folks that are watching this, when we go through the mix room and edit this out, you're going to see a picture come up right now that's going to blow your mind. Because what you're going to see is that Chris, not all that long ago, just like me being a formerly pretty big fat guy and very unhealthy, uh, Chris was too. When you see the pictures popping up right now, you're gonna be blown away because he's about 185, 187 pounds. He's ripped. Uh, he's six foot two or three? Three. Three. So when you only see people on Zoom since you've gotten to know him, <laughs> it's very tough to tell because we look the same height right now, which is deception because I'm, I'm maybe pushing 5'10". But, you know, Chris being at that weight now, big difference from where he had bounced around for a good time of his life. Uh, and we've got some similarities. But uh, when he graduated from high school, he was upwards of almost 260 pounds. So it's probably going to be hard for a lot of people to see. They'll be seeing these pictures hopefully coming up if I do a uh, semi-decent job editing that so people will be able to get the gist of it. So let's talk a little bit, Chris. You know, you know uh, your background – uh, is one where you're making a big change to become a coach because you're very passionate about it, which we're very excited and happy to have you uh, as somebody that's going to be one of those hundred coaches that we're going to hire in this next six months or so uh, as we build out the company. But uh, you started out uh, and had issues with weight fluctuating when you're growing up. I think your family background was similar to mine. So let's talk about that growing up. Like, was everybody really healthy, not healthy in your family? Uh, you, you battle with weight right early on, even in high school, right? Right. Yeah, it kind of runs in the family. Um, throughout the, uh, my years in school, it, it really fluctuated a lot up and down. Um, I would say I stayed kind of average throughout elementary and junior high. Um, high school, freshman year, it was kind of average to upwards gaining. Um, senior year is definitely where it took off. Um, I probably started to 10 to 20 by the middle of the, my senior year, I was 260. Mm -hmm. That's about where I was when I graduated. Yeah. Uh, family history definitely runs in the family, um, uh, both sides. Mm -hmm. Um, my dad's side of the family, most of them are from Virginia. So if you know Virginians, they love their biscuits and gravy. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. The, that's not the only part of the country. That's the, not a, the other parts of the country aren't immune to that. So you, yeah. went, you went through at an early age. You know, here's the thing I like to say to people, um, having been through this. I, I, I wasn't in that range when I was that age. Uh, it came a, a, a bit later on for me, like during college, which was pretty devastating as well. People don't think about this body image thing. Uh, being as uh, big of an impact for guys, they think this is just a gal thing, right? But it, it can be pretty devastating. You want to talk a little bit, like even at that age, seeing yourself that way, you started to kind of experience uh, from the image that you held in your mind and maybe where you're supposed to be uh, some, some angst over it, right? You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, um, 
it can be uh, emotionally um, damaging to um, on both ends, really. Um, uh, growing up, you know, when I uh, when I looked in the mirror and, and saw, you know, what was staring back at me, it, it, you know, it hurt sometimes. Um, I didn't like what I saw, and I got made fun of and picked on in school. So yeah, it's not it's not one sided for sure, you know. Um, I hated uh, what I saw, and um, before I knew what I was doing, I tried many different things. Um, I tried exercising and working out when I was in school um, during my high school years, and um, I started to lose weight a little bit and kept falling off. And um, um, I eventually, right after I graduated. About a year later, I got a personal trainer, and he uh, helped me work out and shed a few pounds. And the dieting part, um, I noticed a lot of people, um, when you ask them for dieting advice, they kind of give you the same thing. If they don't really know how to tell you how to lose the weight, it's mm -hmm. salmon, rice, lean meats broccoli it's like yeah. how do i implement it into my diet though you know yeah but um it can be a, an emotional wreck for sure and yeah. people look at you differently um and, yeah they do i i know where you're yeah. coming from with that let's back up just a second if we can before we get go go any further with that because mm -hmm. i definitely want to get to that um talking about how you started to learn uh, on your own and then you know you obviously you're accelerating that training with what we're doing uh with you but you know, I, I want people with uh, kids to, to think about this for a minute because, you know, uh, I can remember, I was thinking as you were saying this, and, and uh, I, I, it brought back some memories for me. It's funny, I hadn't really thought about this, but um, when I was a kid, I, I was, when I was much younger, I was definitely a bit on the chunky side. Now, I don't even know if Sears and Roebuck was even around anymore by the time you started because you're so much younger than me. Uh, but you know, Sears was a place that, you know, in some areas of the country, it was the place you went for everything. It was the initial department store that was out there for everyone. So you went there to get your jeans, uh, that had to be back in that day. There was no like pre softening the jeans. Like you had to take them to a stream somewhere and like beat them with a rock or a stick or something, <laughs> wash them in your, in your, your tub and the dye ran out. I mean, it was probably awful for what people were putting on their body, but man, what I hated is when I was younger, because I forgot this, you know, I grew up and became a quarterback and a cornerback as, I, as I, I, I went through a growth spurt and was one of the tallest kids, even though I stopped growing in seventh grade. But when I was a little kid, I forgot, I was a lineman at first playing football. So I was a bit chunky. And in fact, they had this, this term and they had a whole section, which would, ne it would never fly in today's day and age. They had the Husky section that you yeah, go to I remember for, that. for shopping. <laughs> so, so I was a Husky and I got to be honest, I was like a tight Husky. Um, so I was probably close to not. Um, and that stuff, I think for a lot of folks today, you know, we just see so many kids and I really am trying to speak, I think to the people listening is I know with what I dealt with uh, growing up is not everybody in my family was healthy either. My dad died at the age of 56 of a massive coronary. My mom has been a type two diabetic for a long time, completely self-inflicted. I, I, I have empathy for her and people that lead those lives. And certainly, you know, we work with a lot of people like that and help them out and do a great job helping them. But, but it starts at home, right? I mean, if, if you're imprinted on uh, being around a family that's healthy and exercises and gets outside and tries to do things to enhance their health, not that any of that, by the way, was in vogue back in the day. Uh, it's certainly maybe a little bit more prevalent now. But I worry with... Uh, uh, what really inspired me with human being to well-being and getting people that come and I get passionate when I meet people like you because it excites me because we've got, you know, forget about this thing that we're dealing with this pandemic with COVID right now. We have an endemic issue, which means it's everywhere. It's worse for people that don't understand the definition of anything. It's worse of kids, you know, hitting uh, a state at, in certain minority groups of age 12.6 where they become type two diabetic. You know, to make it easier to swap, a easier pill for society to swallow, they don't even call it adult onset diabetes anymore. And uh, forget about the fact what this does to their health. What does it do to their well-being and their mental health? And when you hear Chris talking about that, 
uh, as somebody that went through that a little bit too when he was younger, uh, it brought back me thinking about my younger years. And I certainly felt that way again in college when I started to balloon out of weight to control myself. And then several times in adulthood where it can just make you feel like you're, you know, I got to get my stuff together. And, you know, why am I not, why don't I don't have my stuff together. Uh, but then there's other things too where you start to really feel uh, emotionally uh, beat up. Uh, and, and again, I, I bring it up. I don't want to get all woo-woo for the guys and the, and the families and the people listening. But one, think about things starting at home. Think about what your kids are going through when, when they're, they're allowed to, to, to eat ice cream all the time and drink sodas all the time and do all these other things that lead to these things uh, as using food as a reward. For instance, you're a good boy or you're a good girl, so we're going to go get you ice cream or go get you pizza. Um, we know that disease states really don't run in family because of genetic predisposition. We know that they do because of behavior. Um, yeah, there's a genetic thing. So like when you say it runs in family, there's a predisposition that runs in family and we'll give people a pass on that, you know, uh, from an empathy and an understanding because we always want to meet folks where they are and understand that. But for sure, we want them to know that there's a way out, right? So you started seeing a way out. So you get out of high school, um, you start exercising a bit and feeling your way around. I did some of the same things myself, and I'm sure there's other folks out there listening to this that did the same thing. And then somebody gives you the advice, the complex nutritional advice of lean protein. It wasn't even that. You've talked to me before. It was basically like what I did back in the days when I started uh, competing in triathlons and cycling when I got out of college. It was more like chicken, right? Yeah. Rice. Chicken. White rice, by the way. White rice, by the way. <laughs> Maybe yeah. somebody told you to put some seasonings in. And then for good measure, broccoli, right? And you and you and you yeah. kind of went after that for a while. And chicken, broccoli, and you know, rice. that was the diet. Like we could write a three-page book. Uh, it might be one of the best-selling books. Biohacking your way to the quickest way to lose weight, but yet maybe not mal malnourish yourself. Uh, chicken, yeah. broccoli, and rice. Uh, <laughs> so, but it worked, right? For a while, for you, it worked. Yeah. And, and then you kind of went through. So go back to like where you were talking. You were talking about that when I interrupted you, but. Uh, let's talk a little bit about you started going through a learning process there and said, this is not quite working for me. Talk, talk about that yeah. a little bit as far as what you went through with trying to learn. Um, right about there is, um, uh, right about there at that point in time is where relationships began. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, like, uh, so many others, um, I have a tendency to, put all my attention elsewhere aside from myself mm -hmm. and I kind of let it all go and got off track, lost any and all progress right back to square one. Uh, you know, relationship goes down the drain and it was all for nothing. You're looking back in the mirror and you're right back to square one. And yeah, yep. I think and, a lot uh, of people have been through that. Uh, we'll, oh, yeah. we'll, we'll coin a term, uh, a jingoism, because there's a lot of new jingoism <laughs> out there, I think. Yeah, it seems to be the trend. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like the yo-yo relationship diet, uh, complacency. Uh, you know, it, it, it's a natural byproduct of uh, what, we, what we realize is that there's this thing in psychology uh, that we talk about even in nutritional psychology of uh, where does the locus of control of what gives you your self-worth come from? Is it from outside uh, of, of your persona? And I'm, I'm really simplifying some of these terms as far as you could get very technical, but to make it very easy for everybody to understand, uh, or is it inside? Um, self-worth is supposed to come from inside. It's not called others' worth for a very good reason, right? But right. what happens when you look on, you look at yourself in the mirror, you see that, and it's outside of you because it's a mirror, right? And it starts to make you feel bad about yourself. So now you feel bad about yourself, but the locus of control is outside of you. So you've given up control of, of your self-worth or your ability to make yourself feel good about yourself, really to, to have what we just call general well-being, right? Yeah. Then you do it with a person, right? So you project it on them. So it's not, it's not something that's a reflection, but we really view it the same way as the mirror, right? Someone loves me. Someone feels good about me. Um, they care about me and because we get comfortable, we can just let everything else go to hell in a handbasket. Right. And you went through that a couple of different times, right? With, with things. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. A couple of times, um, got married later on, same mm -hmm. thing happened. Um, yeah. in between those, I tried again 
you're working out. I had a buddy who was very supportive. He was a gym buddy. And the second time around, I said, well, I'm not going to screw this up. Uh, made some more progress, got into a relationship, and I kept working out with um, with him on the side and going into um, getting married, and it stopped. And uh, dedicating all my time once again, and then, you know, I got out of the gym, financial situation, no gym, uh, gaining weight, marital problems, arguing, and right back to square one, depression, uh, weight setting in, and, um, I, and on top of all that, you know, I'm back looking in the mirror once again. So it's just, yeah, yeah. it's just a merry-go-round, you know, yeah. that's what it was for me for a long time. And the good thing is what you've learned, because you and I have talked about, you know, spoken about this quite a bit, uh, is you started to learn without, uh, with a lot of self-exploration that your worth has to come from the inside, that you have to feel good about you. And it really, for, for people listening, what I want you to understand is that when we put everything outside of us, uh, we're really saying we have no control. We might not really think that out loud. Uh, and there might not even be a little voice inside your head that's saying that, but that's really what we're doing. That's what we mean when we talk about this locus of control. When you start to get consciousness and get aware that that's what's going on and, the, and start to realize, hey, I shouldn't put my worth on exactly A, completely how I look or how I feel. It should be about what I'm doing for myself, you know, that I'm taking care of myself. So the best way to take care of others around you, and I think it's a great lesson for people to get from this, is one, I want people to get this lesson. I'm harping on this. Guys don't like to talk about this stuff because we're too cool. We're too macho. Um, you know, we don't want to let our guard down that we've got feelings and that we go through some of the very same things. I'm not minimizing this from a sexist perspective uh, from the ladies out there, but here's the thing. Guys go through the same thing uh, and it can be just as devastating for them. Uh, and I want people to be keyed into listening to this, that you're hearing a guy that figured it out and now he's dedicating his life to helping others do the same thing. So this is, this is really an important message I think for people to learn. I want families to learn it, how important it is uh, for their kids that they're allowing to spiral out of control weight wise and that they're not imprinting good behaviors on. And I want guys to understand that if you're going through this, we get you, Chris gets you. If we understand what you're going through, uh, and, and there's a lot of people that can help you kind of get the ball rolling in the right direction. You don't need to do what Chris did. And I even did, uh, to maybe a bit, little bit of a lesser extent because of my education, but what I had to do where I had to go figure it out on my own or go find people and kind of, you know, MacGyver it together with a bunch of duct tape. There, there's, there's plans right. and programs and ways we can teach people to regain that and, and your body, your health, your spirit, your soul, your heart. I don't care what you want to call it. They're all tied together. And, and, and when you get one or two of them healthy, it creates tremendous momentum in your life. And you see things happen like a guy like this sitting here looking at you. That's a young strapping guy with beautiful blue eyes that he's now <laughs> ripped lean machine and he's wanting to help other people do it. So I, I just think it's a great inspiration. And I, I, I know I'm repeating myself, but uh, I want people to right. get to the point that, that this stuff can happen to people and that they can now have a place to go and a person that they can reach out to um, right. to help them with it. So you, and I tell you, you yeah, know, ahead, one of the things that, uh, one of the things that, um, really doesn't help is when they say, you know, um, your significant other, um, yeah, I love you, you know, or whatever for whoever, whatever you look like, it's, it's not whatever you look like, it's who you are. Mm -hmm. It's your personality that matters. When they say, I don't care how much weight you put on, it's, for me, that's kind of didn't help me very much. Mm -hmm. it, it really should matter to you in some aspect. When you look in the mirror, you should like who you look, mm -hmm. who you see. Yeah. You, should under, you should take care of yourself, um, take care of your health, your well-being. Uh, it goes a long way, you know. Yeah. So it, yeah, it, yeah, it has a, a, a dramatic effect on your life and your relationship for sure. Oh, uh, for sure. And, 
not just the relationship with others, the relationship you have with yourself. I mean, the most important person for you to love and care about and take care of should be you. And right. you, you've learned that. You've been through that journey. You had some bumps in the roads like a lot of people go through, but you've yeah. come to realize it. So when we're talking about this to people, what I want people not to hear, because I, I don't want to get a bunch of people sending me like nasty things, we're not talking about becoming a narcissist. That's not what we're talking about. We're not saying that, you know, all you should care about is posing in the mirror and getting lean and ripped. Right. We're not even saying everyone's going to get thin and svelte and, and fit. But what we're saying is health and well-being, if we can get you uh, with what Chris has learned and what we teach people at Human Being to Well-Being is to lead a more on purpose, what we call health style. And I know it can sound corny to people sometimes, but uh, what will happen is a healthier you it will create a leaner you We'll create somebody with a clear mind. We'll create somebody that can have more resiliency in life and cope with things like what we're going through with this crazy damn COVID thing that we're all, uh, that we're all living through. And when you're more resilient, you're going to be happier. Uh, and you're going to be happier not just with the others around you. You'll be happy with yourself. And it's a really, it's, it's a very much a give and take thing that takes a lot of people uh, a long time to, uh, to learn. Uh, you, you went through very almost, you know, there's, there's a, there's a cat chasing the tail. Uh, there's a chicken or the egg thing that happens with people gaining weight. Uh, you know, when you gain a certain amount of weight, the, the adipose tissue ends up acting as an endocrine organ and it starts to knock off a lot of things, uh, from a standpoint of, uh, hormones and hormones can become very dysregulated, uh, not to mention neurotransmitters can become very dysregulated that can actually cause people to either eat more or eat the wrong things because their body starts looking for things that are hits to dopamine centers. As an example, you experienced that firsthand. Like you had the whole spectrum of kind of oh, yeah. what can go wrong and cause people to, to maybe try to self-medicate with food or alcohol or over-exercising or other things. So you, you dealt with some pretty serious bouts of that, right? That, that you went through. Oh yeah. Um, when I, uh, when I was still married and I started my, my weight loss, um, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't have access to a gym. I was still, I, well, this is, I was depressed, not still, but I was depressed. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to make a change. I didn't know how to exercise at home. Um, I didn't have resistance bands. Or, I had some dumbbells, but I'm more of a gym person. Mm -hmm. um, so I decided I was going to diet somehow. And I was like, well, keto was working for my dad. And I, you know, got some advice, but um, living in the household I was, um, it was really hard to shop when everybody around me wasn't really watching their diet. It was yeah, really, yeah. I was on my own. And it was more, not so much keto. It was almost totally fasting because there was almost nothing I could eat. And I got to the point where I was probably under a thousand calories a day at some point, a very low deficit. And I was starving to death most days. I was dropping weight way faster than a, than a healthier rate. Mm -hmm. um, people were noticing me and complimenting my weight loss inside. Uh, I was thanking them. I was happy about it, but inside I was miserable mm -hmm. because it was not a good way to do it and i wasn't eating right i know now that my hormones were dramatically messed up i had no energy whatsoever i just wanted to lay around and do nothing mm -hmm. and even though the weight was dropping there was no exercise no resistance whatsoever so the more weight i lost it was almost like it was kind of disproportionate because i was losing a lot of muscle to muscle right. and strength right. yeah so I was maintaining, you know, there wasn't enough protein coming in, just nothing. Mm -hmm. It was kind of withering away. Yeah. And, you know, what we suggest to people, obviously, and, and now, you know, Chris trains people and does a lot of this stuff along with his nutritional stuff that he does with us. Uh, you know, we always suggest and want people, uh, it doesn't matter what age somebody is, you know, we, we get people that are in their seventies to, to pushing uh, weight around, or at least doing body weight uh, exercises at home. We've got all sorts of programs we can plug into our coaching app from people being directly in a gym for people doing stuff at home, whether it's resistance bands or body weight stuff, we want people, you know, moving their bodies. Uh, it's, it's, it's really, really key important. It's really important uh, from a bone health standpoint, from a mental health standpoint, 
uh, from, uh, uh, you know, how we age as far as uh, maintaining a certain level of muscle mass. And it's certainly one of the most important things people can be doing uh, to increase their metabolic rate and to increase their metabolic efficiencies uh, that they have. So some of the things that you had going on were muscle wasting and you weren't bringing enough calories, you weren't getting enough nutrients from a micronutrient, let alone a macro macronutrient standpoint. And those things are obviously all really important. Good thing is you were able to get yourself educated enough and get yourself on a pretty good trajectory where now you're not there and, and the stuff that you're learning from working with me and from, from you know, going through the training course that we'll be rolling you through is you're learning how to fine tune that and be able to teach other people how to do that as well. Mm -hmm. So, so you're, you're there already, but you, you started feeling better about people. This is maybe not making the point completely, but you know, you at least saw a light at the end of the tunnel is when you started feeling more energized and started going to go in the right direction, you felt better when people were complimenting you. It still made you feel better that people were noticing yeah. you were doing it, but you did realize, and you've come to the realization now that like, that's not the most important thing. The most important thing is how you feel. Right. Right. Exactly. It's a, it's yeah, it's a two way street. You, you have to feel good about yourself. You know, you yeah. are important. You are number one. Yeah. I mean, it's a simple term, what we call self-worth, right? But people make it others worth so much. Like I've said, you know, at least once already, it's, it's one of those things uh, that I remember reading about uh, years ago. Um, and I can't remember who said it uh, or where I read it, but you know, they, they utilized it more as far as self-esteem. They said, it's not others esteem, you know, it's, it's self-esteem. Uh, and, and those can sound like very simple words, but the thing is, when we've not really uh, grown up in the right environment, you know, we don't know how to, you know, what behaviors and attitudes and what to kind of put important and how to put ourselves first. In fact, some households, you know, it, it's like, you know, don't be selfish, don't be narcissistic, don't put yourself worst. You're a very selfish person, uh, you know, for wanting to worry about that or taking care of that or eating differently than we eat or wanting to go out and do that. You know, there can be a lot of things. I mean, I've run into a lot of instances. So I, I want to circle this back to the correct environment, you know, we're always teaching people, you always hear me preaching about mindset and environment, right? The correct right. environment for a kid to grow up in is one where parents hear stories like this and then say, yeah, I don't want Johnny or Susie or Bobby to get type two diabetes when they're 12 or 13 or 14. I don't want them to have, you know, all the disease states because they think they're genetically predispositioned and this is the way it's going to be. So if this message reaches one family, you, you, know, you and I have done a great thing today, you know, with people hearing this, it's important to you. You know, uh, we haven't really talked about this much, but you've got a kid, uh, right. young boy, seven. He's eight. eight. He's about to turn nine. Okay. <laughs> okay. I knew it was in that range. I don't know if I ever even asked you specifically, but um, it's important to you that he gets these lessons, right? I mean, isn't this something right. that you think about yeah. directly, like often? Uh, yes, as as all the time. Yeah. Yes. My family will even tell you, I point it out all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. mean, so it, it's important that, that he understands it's good for him to take care of himself and that it's not a bad thing that he understands how important it is, uh, to, uh, follow the example of dad now. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, and not some of the other examples that are in front of him to, so that he can, uh, you know, have that healthier body image and that healthier self image that goes along with having better self esteem, which just makes for a better human being, right? I mean, that's, that's, what, that's what we want to do. I mean, we don't want to stop there. We want people to become well beings and live as a well being. And we mean something different than just having well being with that. And uh, suffice it to say, you and I will probably do another recording and talk about what we mean with that. But uh, where you are now is anxiety, mood, depression, the, the mood swings, energy are all pretty good, right? You know, for you. Oh yeah. Yeah. Much better. Much yeah. better. Now yeah. let's, let's talk about, you've been through it, right? You've lived it. Uh, you're a living example. I said up front, that is not something you can teach to people. You've got to go through it. So to me, uh, it's exciting. I'm proud of you, what you've done. Uh, you. I think it's awesome. Tell people like, you know, why you're doing this, like why you want to be a coach and, and what you want to do. I mean, it, we were kind of telling it, but, you know, put it in your words as far as uh, what makes you get up uh, and, and want to live this life now and share it with others. Um, I've, I've been through what feels like 
all of it. I've seen it all. And I see other people going through the same thing. I see them struggling. Uh, I see the effects that it has on them. They feel the same way that I used to. And nobody's there to help them. Like when it was me, nobody was there to help me. And um, now that I've got the hang of it, I know what I'm doing. I love what I do. And I've had a lot of people compliment me and ask me questions on how can I help them to do the same thing. And it's really inspired me to want to become a nutritionist. And um, it's just grown on me to um, help people mm-hmm. the, the same way that, you know, that I did for myself. And when I, you know, when I see them going through this, it just brings back memories and I don't want like seeing people go through that because I know how bad it hurts. I know how hard it is. And I know that I can be that person for them where nobody was there for me. I can be right there for them. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. And I hope that that kind of inspires people. All right. We'd be remiss if we didn't talk about something that you and I have in common. We both like to cook and and you, (laughs) We got off the subject. We were talking about the, the rice and chicken and broccoli, and we never came back to the cooking lesson that we're going to give people a little bit here. Uh, I always, as you know, get very impassioned. I grew up in a family that did cook a lot, even though I've had to learn different ways to eat with the way that I eat now being uh, completely plant-based. Um, you're not, and that's okay. We don't harp people that they have to be. We want people to, <laughs> we want people to eat whole foods. We want them to eat more vegetables. We want them to at least be somewhat plant-centric. Not everybody has to become, you know, plant based, based like Dr. Fragmenti. That's not necessary. Chris has uh, evolved his cooking, so I want people to know that I. The, one of the biggest things I beat people up on a little bit is I don't know how to cook, so I have to go out to McDonald's every day or go to Pizza Hut or whatever. <laughs> we, you know, if you're picking up what I'm laying down, we think all that stuff is awful. We don't want you eating any of it. So what we try to do is teach people very simple ways. Um, your favorite thing to make, you know, obviously what I'm getting at is Chris has learned how to make a lot more things now than just chicken rice and, and, uh, you know, (laughs) broccoli, uh, your big, you're one of your favorite things, which I didn't know this till we were talking the other day is flatbreads. You like to make flatbreads. So tell people, just explain to people how complicated this is to do it. Like what, what you would do. Cause it's easy to talk through and it kind of should shame people into thinking they can't make something pretty healthy at home. It's, it's really, really complicated. Okay. So you go to the store and you buy um, wraps. I like to buy Joseph's flat. I like to buy Joseph's wraps, the mm-hmm. original. Um, you can buy any kind. You can buy uh, a, whatever kind of pizza sauce floats your boat. Um, I like to get either the pizza squeeze or, or I think something like that. Uh, sometimes I like to get buffalo sauce, mm-hmm. and there's a, a mozzarella cheese and chicken. If you want to use chicken or turkey pepperoni, any of those toppings with your favorite vegetables. Heat the the flatbread up in the oven first to get it nice and warm. That way it gets crispy in the oven. Pull it back out, put your toppings in. Put some oregano on it and then throw it back in for 10 minutes. Tops. It is done. <laughs> it's that hard, people. I mean, that's what we're getting at. And, and now, <laughs> now I'd be remiss as the plant-based doctor if I, did, if I didn't put my two cents in. One, uh, I, I do know that, that flatbread, I remember years ago using it. They're, they're, it's pretty good. I don't think there's any added oils in it. We're, we're concerned with certain types of oils when they get heated up, becoming rancid. And it's actually one of the most inflammatory things you can put in your body. So I tell people, read labels, make sure you're not seeing a lot of like canola oil and things like that, uh, that are added in. It's very tough to avoid them too. If you're a gluten-free guy, like a lot of the people we work with, and I have to be myself, there are wraps and or flatbreads and or crusts even that you can get that are gluten-free. So don't, don't feel remiss if you can't get that. And if you had to make them from scratch, like we do sometime, it adds an extra complicated step. Mm-hmm. You don't need to go through that, though. You can very typically find them. Uh, look look at the jars of sauce because I don't know that brand, and people are listening to this all over the country. There's different brands of sauces out there. 
I, I tend to want to tell people, as you know, Chris, to, to get organic stuff when they can afford it. Um, watch the things in sauces for sugars. Um, watch the things uh, that are put in sauces and look for things that have things like olive oil in them if you can find them as opposed to, again, that's a spot that some of these vegetable uh, oils that are very inflammatory, especially when they get heated up, can hide. So we want people to pay attention to that stuff. And lastly, with cheese, of course, being a plant-based guy, I'm cool with people putting all that stuff on there. Just look for additives, look for preservatives, get stuff organic if you can, if you've got to eat that stuff. What Chris didn't tell you is one of his favorite things is, is a pizza that has a lot of vegetables thrown on it uh, as well. These can be things, I, I love to cook what we call, growing up uh, in an Italian household, I call them peasant dishes. It would be like literally whatever you've got in your refrigerator, you throw it in a pan, you put some olive oil, you put some garlic, you put some onions, you throw whatever vegetable you've got in there. And when we, when I used to eat meat, that's where chicken would go into or, or sausage would go into. Uh, I certainly feel like I can't condone that now, but yeah. I'm okay with people eating that as long as there's a, a bunch of vegetables with it. And as long as they're eating as clean as oh, yeah. possible uh, with that. I and like to throw a lot of red pepper flakes all over it too. Yeah. I mean, that's delicious. The, the, the ways you can do things with Buffalo sauce, they're good. Um, and for people that, you know, are trying to get away from, uh, eating as much dairy and gluten. There's ways to, to go with that. This, the cheese doesn't even have to be, and I, I kind of started doing this even back when I still ate dairy, is it doesn't have to be the predominant thing on there. It doesn't need to be right. smothered. You'll actually appreciate it more if there's a little bit less mm -hmm. cheese on there and you're tasting more of, the, the, of the, the fresh vegetables and different things that you can put on it. But the yeah. lesson of the day is it is easy as hell to do it. Uh, anyone can do it. Um, you know, this guy used to burn rice in a boiling, uh, when he would boil it in, <laughs> right in the bag. Multiple uh, times. <laughs> so anybody can learn how to do it. You know, this is not something that's hard. People don't need to overcomplicate their life. And, and good Lord, in today's day and age, you can almost Google anything and find a video on YouTube. Uh, gosh, you can even find recipes Chris has posted to his stuff. And I posted my stuff of desserts and uh, gluten-free vegan things and other things where you've put some other... Uh, yeah. uh, very friendly, non, non super sweet, healthy protein, uh, added into it, uh, types of bars that people can make. So you can go find resources anywhere for people. And this excuse of people saying, I, I you know, I can't even boil water. I just don't accept it in today's day and age, because I think you could right. probably, you could probably figure out how to build a nuclear reactor by putting things into YouTube and searching how to. So yeah. I'm certainly positive that people could figure out how to turn the oven on to the right temperature, how to adjust the flame. Don't walk away from it. You know, don't burn your house down. We're not <laughs> condoning that, but we just want you to try to prepare foods yourself. Look at the ingredients. Know that you're, that you, you know, when, when Dr. Fragamani or coach Chris Matney asks you how many whole fruits or how, how many whole vegetables have you eaten today that the answer is not two. And it's because you had a French fry with ketchup on it. Uh, you know, so, so <laughs> it's, it's not hard. There's resources out there. Anyone can learn how to cook. And, uh, I'm with you. I mean, whether it's a peasant dish, like I was talking where you might throw pasta or rice into something like I was outlining or whether it's a, a we'll call it a peasant pizza, whether it's a, just, just a flatbread with whatever you can throw on it. Uh, it'll yeah. be probably better than anything you've ever gotten out of a frozen, uh, food, uh, you know, uh, yeah. You know, aisle in the grocery market, and it, and a lot of times, if you get if you really can button it down, what to do with the seasonings and, and everything, uh, it can be better than a lot of pizzas you'd get from a lot of places you'd order them. Um, I, I know the big yeah. big thing is, I mean, it's so hard because we're in a different world now. But like, uh, I, you talk to people, and I used to be the guy always looking for like who had the best chicken wings, who had the best pizza in any town that I would go to, right? And you inevitably you'd find out that people would say, really, our none of our pizza is really that good. You know, mm -hmm. none of that pizza. Right. You know, uh, so and so has okay pizza, but again, when you really think about yeah. it, it's not great. We also know with all those pizzas, by the way, nothing's organic. There's a ton of oils. They're not using the best cheese. They're not using the best things. There's a lot of sodium put into these things, and they're really, really just like gut bombs with what they do to you. Uh, What's really nice is the more I cook, the the more I I made foods. Um, the more I wanted to make the more complicated foods yeah, and, and bake the, the fancy desserts. Like I, I've never been one to really care about doing the vegan gluten-free stuff. 
but yeah, I finally gave it a shot. Um, I think I posted it yesterday. I did a vegan, gluten-free, nut-free, maybe, uh, dessert, chocolate ganache, shortbread. It, yeah, it, it took a while to make because I, I had to make some of the flour. I made the sunflower butter from scratch. Right. Um, I've made so many things, and it was it just turned out really awesome. So, that could be fun. And, like yeah, and you know what? Um, have you had the chance? Do you do? Have you done any of that type of stuff with your son too? Not yet. Okay, he's, it, it he's not boy. much into the kitchen stuff, but yeah, he will. Well, boys, it can be tougher. I was going to say, I, 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 I wasn't. I'm not saying that as a po- opposed to young ladies. But young boys with just them to be them, they're kind of indifferent about that. You know, they want to open something mm-hmm. up, they want to be uh, quick. Right. With it. But um, and and girls can be the same way. You know, they might just be like, just just make make me something, make me my mac and cheese box. You know, that's <laughs> what they're doing. That's not. We're not talking about that kind of cooking together. I don't want you opening up a craft macaroni and cheese and you know adding water, some butter, and some milk and think that that's a family cooking together. But what I would urge families to do is, you know, try to. Take, take some of what we said and, and do a family fun night, maybe, where you make flatbreads like that homemade. And what, what's the worst thing that's going to happen? Are someone going to come out wrong? Big deal. Like you're not, you know, yeah. yeah, don't set your house on fire. Short of that, <laughs> success. And you're getting your kids to think about like, wow, this is what food looks like when it's prepared uh, with our own hands. Uh, yeah. and, and it can be a lot of fun. I mean, I know I was lucky enough uh, to grow up in a, in a big family that you, you kind of learned how to cook either vicariously through, you know, you know, hanging around yeah. the apron strings of your grandmother or whatever. Uh, right. I've always and had, if you're family. following somebody else's recipe, imagine how many times they screwed it up before they got exactly. it. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I would tell people try, you know, and, and it, there's an age with kids, you know, when, when I was talking about your son, I'm thinking like, yeah, seven, eight might be tough. You know, they might like to make Christmas co- cookies or cookies or maybe some, I think kids are maybe more into the dessert things. So if you kind of fool them with something that like what you did, although that's a complicated recipe knowing what you made, but, uh, but there are things that you can do with kids that, you know, catches their interest. And what you'll find is they'll have an appetite uh, for foods that they prepare. Uh, So if you can sneak in good ingredients that are whole foods, uh, kids would be interested in eating that more than if you said, uh, uh, Hey, I want you to eat your peas and, carrots and whatever it is you're throwing at them hopefully it's not some frozen nasty thing that tastes freezer burn hopefully it's something that's fresh <laughs> it's just maybe be right. sort of. i've found that uh the longer i've been eating um a lot of these home-cooked meals and the more whole foods i eat i can't handle takeout food like i used to my body just rejects it yeah it, it doesn't handle it yeah. anymore well, there's a lot of reasons, and a lot of it's the oils and the salts and the things that I yeah. have mentioned, and that's that's typically why we're why we're having that. Um, you know, well, you know, in closing, I just want to say we're excited for the prospects of what you're going to add to our company. You know, um, we we know that your story uh, is going to resonate with people. Um, for folks that are in the Columbus, Ohio uh, area, uh, outside of Columbus, uh, and wanted to work. Uh, either do training with with Chris, uh, personal training, as well as coaching uh, with some of the things or talk about supplements and some of the things that we do with protocols. Um, look Chris up. We'll be posting your contact information uh, with this video. Um, we're excited for you to learn uh, more about the craft of, of being a professional coach and becoming a certified biohacking advisor. Uh, so we're glad to have you uh, as part of the team. Uh, and we know that you're going to go on to do great things. Uh, so. Uh, we expect nothing less than for you to be able to get results like that for every client you come across that's wanting, willing, and able to listen uh, and wants instruction uh, and uh, wants to help heal themselves and, you know, go from, you know, I say these things a lot, but go from being a human being to a well-being. But, you know, that's what we're all about. That's our mission in life. You and I are in the same boat rowing together, right? We're, we're getting after trying to help people and spread this message that, uh, you know, it's okay to, to, to start wherever you are and that you can make great progress if you get somebody like us that can maybe help you do it a little bit more quickly. Whether it's with our experiences we've had or the advice we can give or our biohacking strategies, uh, we know we can get people going in the right direction and, and help them take responsibility for where they are. And I just, you're a great, you're a great example of that, you know, so we're, we're real thankful, you know, to, to have you on board. 
Um, anything you want to add at the, the tail end of this, Chris? Anything? Uh, did we leave anything out of what we wanted to talk about? Um, no. You know? Probably not until we stop the recording. Yeah. Do you, want, <laughs> do you want to say how thankful you are coming to work for us? Yeah. And, you know, you can't believe uh, how amazing of a team that we've got. Or it is, it's great. Uh, I am. I'm pretty stoked. <laughs> I, I, I'm, just, I'm kidding with that. I'm not, uh, and I'm kidding for the people watching and listening. I'm obviously just trying to be comical at the tail end. Well, listen, um, you know, I appreciate you the time you spent uh, coming uh, to uh, sit down and take time. We we're always busy doing a lot of other things. We don't have time to sit down and have chats like this. So to me, it's really just enjoyable from that standpoint. Um, you know, we can always pick up things from each other uh, and learn from each other. And uh, I, I know I feel thankful for that. Um, for you folks listening, we'll put some contact information, uh, for you to be able to reach out to Chris directly or to reach out to our team. If you're looking for somebody to help you, uh, we're wanting, willing and able and ready to serve uh, whatever it is that you're looking to accomplish. And, uh, with that, we wish everyone a great day, uh, go out and make this a healthy one and, and uh, you know, look up, look around and embrace what we're going through and just know that we'll get through this. We'll get through it. Take care all. Thank you. This has been the Human Being to Well-Being Show with Dr. Bernard J. Fragamini. Make sure you check us out on all of our social media platforms so you can stay in touch and in tune with everything that we're bringing you around health style, transformation, natural medicine, functional nutrition, nutritional psychology, and the whole gamut that's going to make you live forever as a well-being. Go out and make this day the best day you've ever had because it's the one that we've got.